five shocking foods that you won't believe are unhealthy. In this video, I'm gonna reveal five different food and drink items that are common everyday foods that are actually not healthy for you, even though a lot of people think that they are. Number four is probably the one that you'd least expect, but I'm gonna start with number one, which is granola bars. While a lot of these are marketed as a healthy snack or a safe thing to bring on the go, most of them are just trash. Oftentimes they're just filled with added sugars, glucose syrups, artificial ingredients, and seed oils. They're heavily processed packaged foods that are just gonna lead to a spike in your blood sugar and then subsequently a crash, making you feel tired and fatigued later on. Instead, if you're looking for something that's on the go as far as a healthy bar, you're gonna wanna look for the protein bars, the things that are high in protein and low in artificial ingredients. Please, please, please make sure that your bars do not have vegetable or seed oils either. These are common things like sunflower oil, soybean oil, canola oil, cottonseed oil. These are highly inflammatory omega-6 oils that are not good for our health and have been shown to lead to chronic inflammation. I really like the brand No Cow for their non-dairy protein bars. This is a great option if you're someone like me that doesn't digest dairy very well. Or if you like to stick to your whey protein, Quest Nutrition does a great job. They've got several good flavors and they do an almost perfect job. They only have one thing I don't really like on their ingredients, which is the zero calorie non-sugar sweetener called sucralose. Sucralose has been shown in certain studies to cause digestive issues and rats, so it's something that isn't really the best. But where are my protein bar fans at? Drop a comment with what your favorite protein bars are. I'm really curious to see which one you guys like the best. Up number two is going to be salad dressings. Yes, I know what you're probably thinking. Wait, Cooper, what? And you're gonna tell me that salads are not good for me now? Yeah kind of am. It really just depends on the salad dressing. That's what it comes down to. I'm not one of those guys that subscribes to the mantra of like all vegetables are bad for you or leafy greens or poisonous or all this stuff. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with a salad, you know, spinach, cabbage, arugula, things like that. It's just that the salad dressings that you're gonna pick up at the grocery store most of the time are not good for you. The salad dressings that are gonna be used at a lot of common restaurants, equally as bad. Most of these common salad dressings are gonna be using highly inflammatory oils like soybean oil or canola oil as their main ingredient and as their base. A lot of companies will also top that off with a decent amount of added sugar so that the sauce is nice and sweet. You'll also see a lot of preservatives and tons of artificial ingredients added into the dressings to help extend the shelf life. They kind of design it in a way so that theoretically you could leave the same bottle of salad dressing on the shelf for like six months, come back to it, and it would still be okay to eat it. That's not real food. No real food would be able to last that long on the shelf. Instead, I would look for salad dressings that use extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil as their primary base. And companies that keep their preservatives and added sugar to a minimum or even none at all. One of my favorite brands is called Primal Kitchen. They absolutely crush it with salad dressings. They have tons of different flavors. The ranch and the Caesar dressing are by far the best in my opinion. They're popping up in more and more grocery stores now as well, so you should have no problem finding Primal Kitchen dressings uh, somewhere near you. Although if they don't have them at the regular grocery store. If you go somewhere a little bit nicer, like a Whole Foods or a dedicated natural grocers or healthy food store, they'll definitely have it there. Next up is going to be protein drinks like muscle milk. While these are trying to be healthy and they're trying to market it as this healthy product with these good ingredients to fuel you up before and after your workout, they really miss the mark. They really miss the mark when it comes to providing you all of the solid, high quality ingredients that you really wanna be consuming surrounding your heavy workouts. I mean, just look at muscle milk, for example. Look at that laundry list of ingredients. Nothing should have that many ingredients on the label. Anything with that many different ingredients is not going to be optimal for you. That's just not real food. Plus, they use a few different less than ideal zero calorie sweeteners in there and artificial flavoring. Now, artificial flavoring is really just a bulk term. It's a bulk blanket statement they're able to put on nutrition labels. It basically just takes the place of upwards of 741 individual chemicals that they're able to use in a chemistry lab. They're able to mix together to create a specific flavoring or ingredient. Most of these chemicals, by the way, you definitely cannot pronounce. I've looked at the long list of chemicals on the FDA website. Now, just because you can't pronounce something doesn't mean that it's bad for you. But the issue is when we see 
artificial flavors on the nutrition label, we have no idea what chemicals are in there. We don't know which ones are good for us and which ones are bad for us. This is the exact opposite of natural or whole foods. All right, next up is going to be flavored yogurt. I think this country is a little bit confused when it comes to what's healthy and what's not. And a lot of times companies are trying to be sneaky by saying healthy, yogurts, probiotic, Greek blend, X, Y, and Z. But a lot of times what they're doing is they're using that as a bluff. But a lot of times what they're doing is they're adding in tons of sugar, adding in tons of flavoring and things, which is not going to be ideal. Take the company Greek God, for example. They have a vanilla Greek yogurt that has upwards, I think about 15 grams of added sugar per serving. That's almost four cubes of sugar for less than a cup of yogurt. In an ideal scenario, you're gonna wanna be getting some yogurt that's really high quality that comes from grass-fed cows. So there's a brand called Alexander that does a great job. They actually have grass-fed. Ideally, you wanna be looking for yogurt that doesn't have a ton of additives, doesn't have any added sugar or flavorings. This company, Alexander, is actually a great representation of what I'm talking about. It also comes from grass-fed cows, which is great. It's organic, it's plain yogurt, extra cream at the top, certified regenerative, which means that it comes from a regenerative farm. So the way that they actually raise the cattle is super humane and it's basically the best for the environment as well. There's other companies as well that make grass fed, all natural yogurt as well, just like they do in Europe. I think Maple Hills is one of the other brands and there's some other good ones that, you know, Whole Foods and healthy food stores, just if you know what you're looking for. Last but not least, we got breakfast cereals. I know this might be a fan favorite for some of you and for me, myself, there was a time in my life where I lived off of this stuff. But it's really sneaky because a lot of times they wanna say whole grain, they wanna say healthy this, they wanna say a great source of vitamin D or vitamin C or whatever the case, but the reality is for most most cereals are using tons of added sugar. It's uh, heavily refined processed flours or grains or corn starches that's going into these, which are just not healthy ingredients. They're not whole ingredients. Typically you're getting a lot of extra additives in there. You're getting coloring, you're getting food dyes, a lot of crazy stuff. The reason that a lot of those breakfast cereals will say it's a good source of XYZ mineral or XYZ vitamin is because they're fortifying. The cereal itself is so refined and it's so heavily stripped of all of its nutrients that it actually has like no nutritional value. Then in order for them to get away with selling it, they have to like pump in supplemented vitamins. I don't know, man. I mean, even if you're getting the vitamins, do you want to be eating something that's been stripped of all of its natural nutrients and then they add in vitamins? Or do you want to be eating something that's a whole organic real food that has all of its normal natural nutrients and minerals already in it. As for healthy options of cereal, I got a few brands that I'll shout out here that I've recently been turned on to, one of which is called Living Intentions. They have really cool superfood cereal, which they pack with like different adaptogens, chlorella powder, charcoal, cacao. So that's really good. They've got really clean ingredients, no BS. Uh, it's a little bit harder to find. There's another company called Seven Sundays. It does a good job, clean ingredients, um, pretty good stuff. And then one of my favorites that I've been eating for a while is a company called Kia. So it's Q-I-A is how you spell that. They've got coconut uh, chocolate super flakes, which is a great one. It's just sweetened a little bit with coconut palm sugar. And then it's got some other really good sprouted grains and ingredients in there that I really like. Those are the five shocking everyday foods that are unhealthy for you. And I gave you some good recommendations of what you can eat instead. That's it. Have a great rest of your week.